Electricast. You are about to participate in the most ambitious culinary experiment ever imagined. This competition is going to test everything. Adapt quickly to anything. I mean anything. The wildest day of your life starts right now. All new 24 and 24 Last Chef Standing. Sunday night at 8 on Food Network. Stream on Max. Wesley, where have you been? I have really missed you. Who was this love of yours? Oh, my sweet Wesley. A farm boy. Poor oh, and perfect. Why did you come here, Wesley? We are changing the course of history as we see it. That is what Wesley demands. We're going to Sizzler. It's Wesley month. Strong stuff, all right. It'll take a month. A month? Wesley month. Or whatever movies with Wesley and Iris. Studi Snipes. Ichishta. That's right, Wesley Month. At Or Whatever Movies, we're talking a movie from 1993. Boy, has anyone seen this movie? Geronimo, an American legend. Starring your boy, Wes Studi. The story of an Apache chief and his armed resistance to the U.S. government's subjugation of his people. I'm not really sure about that. (laughs) This is kind of more the story of Lieutenant Charles Gatewood and Matt Damon. Are you sure it wasn't about Netan Lupin, George Crook? Are you sure it wasn't about Britton Davis before Goodwill Hunting? Britton Davis, of course, played by Matt Damon, who is very baby-faced in this. Yep. And by Natan Lupin, you're talking about Brigadier General George Crook, played by Gene Hackman. How many Westerns has Gene Hackman done? I only know him from three. All three available at orwhatevermovies.com or wherever you get podcasts. Of course, Unforgiven as the legendary Little Bill. And then he banked off of that with The Quick and the Dead. And now Geronimo, an American legend? Yeah, actually, this was right around the same time. Just generally speaking, Gene Hackman is a Western bastard. Yeah, he sure is. He's gnarly in Unforgiven and in the other one with Leonardo DiCaprio. So how about Jason Patrick? Is he like the 90s fastbender? Jason Patrick is weird. He's a little bit reclusive. He's very selective about his movies. Of course, everyone knows him for The Lost Boys. And then so it's like a surprise for him to turn up in Geronimo and American Legend. And he gets on screen and I haven't seen him in a while. And I'm like, what accent is that? What are we doing? (laughs) And it was distracting. And apparently it's a Virginia accent, but man, that was weird, right? Yeah, isn't there a, like a pan-European new American accent from this time? Yeah, the transatlantic accent from the time, the, the ladies' accent that we discussed. Yeah, that. like Kind of like Maestro. It was weird and soft and strange and kind of like, I guess I will be relegated. I will be exiled now to some place of no consequence, and I shall take my horse whiskey and we will be off. You know, Godspeed and and good health to you. (laughs) Jason Patrick's Charles Gatewood is like totally my type. Ew. That solemn, solid. Gently compromised hairline and big old puppy dog eyes and. (laughs) Emo eyes. Yeah. But West Duty is surrounded by some big time 90s actors. I mean, and up and coming and. Up and coming, I guess, in Matt Damon, because this is before Goodwill, Hunt- Goodwill Hunting? It is, by a couple of years. This is West Studi's Oppenheimer, where he was a bad Indian, as they were called at the time, for a lot of this time, and then he stepped up into the titular role to worldwide acclaim, you know, permanence as, as a leading man, Oscars, Golden Globes, SAG Awards, uh, A-list status. Are you kidding? Yes. But he has a good face. Geronimo looks like Harriet Tubman. So he is like the best. He's our best Native American actor, indigenous person. A better escort movie than Hostiles. Yeah, I was afraid it was trending in that direction, though. I was like, really? He's getting a a military escort? But it didn't really end up that way. Yeah, not so much. This movie did influence later films like Anatomy of a Fall or The Zone of Interest with that opening shot, which was the longest, slowest push on a static image 
all the way through the opening credits I've ever. It was like six minutes of Geronimo's face. I know, but isn't his face like a Monet or something? That's what I'm saying. He's great. And just to look at his very interesting face is way better than had they cast a, you know, a picture perfect Geronimo lookalike, which wouldn't have been quite as good. They went high profile Native American actor. I don't know. I'm just asking, is yeah. West Duty Apache? No. It's not like Memoirs of a Geisha. There were so few actual Japanese actors in that movie that uh, just any Asian nationality can pass for Japanese. A lot of Chinese people in that movie. This movie, like, well, not quite like Hostiles, but in terms of uh, historical authenticity, accuracy, uh, I guess some trumped up stuff. But adapting it into a movie, there were notable people left out that were instrumental in Geronimo's capture. That was curious, but it was an interesting take on what this movie, what his his legacy was proposed to be. So Geronimo, a famous Apache holdout, right, is refusing to resign to the retire to the reservation, the the U.S. reservation. Well, except he resigns to the reservation more than anyone ever. He resigned to his fate twice. He surrendered and then rebelled and then surrendered again. Right. So does that make him less heroic? I don't know. Is Geronimo heroic in this movie? I had a little bit of a hard time. He is an American legend, a uh, title which director Walter Hill didn't really like. He felt this should have been the Geronimo Wars. As Britton Davis, Matt Damon stated that this was about the campaign to bring Geronimo in. So was he a hero? Because he kind of went all Billy the Kid and he was looting copper mines and repelling attacks and murdering people. So he didn't seem particularly heroic. Maybe legendary and hero and heroism are not synonymous. Not an American hero, but an American legend. And legend might have a negative, nefarious connotation. Maybe. maybe yeah, maybe he's more, yeah. Like legendary exploits kind of a thing. Right. Even in the rebellion fight across the stream uh -huh. when they shoot the shaman, that seemed like the filmmakers were setting it up as being a moral gray area. Right. They were in defense of their their medicine man, but also maybe kind of looking for an excuse to rebel. Even Geronimo charged up at that point and said, you leave here, implying they would stay there even though their medicine man had just been killed. But I guess when it got out of hand and the army doesn't back down. Uh, is just the way it's going to go. So I think they were, well, as depicted in this movie, they were forced into rebellion because it was that, or obviously they were going to come in and kill people, whoever pissed them off, that they were subjugated. And Geronimo and his people, his merry band, would not be subjugated in the way that it was evidenced that uh, Crook's dudes were going to, how they were going to handle it. And in the end, he merely bought him and his merry band, as you put it, a couple months Maybe yeah, a year? but in doing so, he cemented his place in Native American history. Not unlike Harriet Tubman, the depiction by Cynthia Erivo, he was also considered not as much a warrior as he was a seer, as a holy man, as a visionary who led his people spiritually or whatever. My my white eyes were opened. Yeah, and so why are they the white eyes and not like the blue eyes? I looked it up. A Native American said that when the whites came, the first thing his people noticed about them was the sclera around their eyes was particularly white. And he said, you have very white eyes. Our people don't have this. Ours are more coffee colored. And it's it's so distinct about you that that term stuck. Of course, it became a pejorative. It is a sl considered a slur to be a white eye. It's a little different to say the blue-eyed devil from the white-eyed devil. Yeah. So you being our resident Western expert, where does Geronimo, an American legend, fit in in the genre? This is not a great time for Westerns. Did you know that Geronimo, an American legend, was released one week after the Geronimo TV movie? Walter Hill suggested that that really hurt the box office. You know what else? really hurts the box office of Geronimo and American Legend being released the same year as Tombstone. Ooh. What's notable about the, the modern Western, and I'm talking about Westerns 30 years ago now, more than that, is that 
very few of them featured Indians at the time. Cowboys and Indians, as we grew up and Dad grew up, is an old trope based on, you know, the 50s Westerns. Maybe even the Sergio Leone had no Native Americans in his movies that I recall. Uh, likewise, consider Unforgiven Tombstone, Young Guns even. Very, very few. I mean, they were around, but they didn't pr play prominent characters. So... In the same way that Django Unchained was not so much a Western as a Southern, as Quentin Tarantino called it, I don't know if this is a Western in the cowboy movie sense as much as this is a Native American movie with some dudes with cowboy hats. That said, Geronimo had, uh, had a peacemaker and uh, wasn't making peace with it. I've definitely never seen this movie. Was curious by everybody who showed up, the Western stars in particular. Gene Hackman, for goodness sake. I mean, Matt Damon was just a kid, and Jason Patrick might as well have been a kid. But then, was Dances with Wolves a Western? I guess so. The, he was in the American West, but it was more about Native Americans. And then the dude showed up, Geronimo's buddy, and I was like, it's wind in his hair! And he was from Dances with Wolves. Rodney Grant? Yeah, Rodney Grant. This feels to me apart from Westerns, but I'm not exactly sure why. It just doesn't fit in with the whites are the heroes kind of thing. No more than, than Best Picture winner 1990 Dances with Wolves does. This is more, I don't know, it kept reminding me of The Doors. We're trading a lot on the mysticism of the Red Man. And whenever he shows up at first, he's got the circular throat singers going and the little penny whistles. And it's just very Indian. Yeah, I was very surprised by the throat singing. Like, were they just going for some exotic sound? Because that's more like Tibetan, Asian. It's the blend. <laughs> I always go back to I Love Lucy, where you just, Americans aren't aware, so they just blend all that. It's the myst mysticism of the Orient, and this is the mysticism of the Red Man. And it just, it all sounds, yeah, exotic as opposed to authentic. <laughs> right. I mean, I get, I got the effect very other and cool because I think throat sings amazing. The whole circular breathing thing. Yep. So weird. But I definitely was questioning the authenticity. I was also re questioning the representation of, I don't know, women in Geronimo and American Legend. <laughs> I think the only women we get are simply human cattle herded from one location to another. Wow. I don't know if Kelly Ray is, is sexist or not, because she said about Geronimo, I don't think there was one woman in that whole right. movie. Does she not see the Native American women as women? Man. <laughs> well, they just aren't main characters. Maybe that's what she meant. That was my comment for Rambo. And of course, you pointed out there was Rambo's friend's mom. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's my justification. What? The dude's mom was there. He talked to her for a second by the lake. <laughs> but this is a dude western where a whole bunch of dudes commit a whole bunch of war atrocities. And that's <sighs> what dudes do. Yep. <sighs> and who's the dudinous western man that ever was that's in this movie? Robert Duvall? Tough guy Robert Duvall, man. And then Jerry shot Robert Duvall, and I was like, that is a surefire way to burn. You're not going to get away with it. If, by Jerry, you mean Geronimo? Yeah. <laughs> Cotter went, remember, so he gets he gets shot, and I was like, oh, that's not good. And then he lived, and I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I just cauterized the wound and thought I'd show up for the gun battle. And cauterization is like a tourniquet. It's not, it doesn't fix your grievous wound. It only stops, it only burns and melts the wound, binds the wound together with seared flesh to prevent you from bleeding out. He's still shot. It's not better. But apparently it's not the first time he's done that. So he's just a tough guy. Yeah. I mean, did you see how he died? Yeah. Which wasn't factual, by the way. And actually... No, it's so cinematic. Yeah. So Robert Duvall resisted. This role was expanded for him. And, you know, you've got Robert Duvall, who's a classic Western actor and, you know, a legendary film actor, then you expand the role for him. But he didn't want to die because he's like, I've died like nine times by now on film at that point. <laughs> and, and so he didn't actually die. It was implied that he died. Hey, that rhymes. What do you mean? He just took a little nap? Yeah, he took, he said, I'm going to take a little nap and then closed his eyes and was heavy breathing. 
we didn't actually see him die. Because do you know how Robert Duvall's character actually died in real life? How did Al Siebert actually die? Yeah, tough guy Al Siebert. He he was clearing a rock from a road, like a gigantic boulder. They were excavating a giant boulder, and it fell over and landed on him like Wiley e. Coyote. No. Yep, he went splat. Wait, the giant boulder that he was trying to move rolled on top of him? Like, I guess he was working. They were clearing a road or something or, or, or building a road. It was like a giant operation. And it was a giant coyote-sized boulder. And you can't cauterize that, Al. So he went splat. <laughs> By the way, never coming out, right? Nope. The Wild E. Coyote movie? Yeah, the uh, it's Coyote versus Acme. Yeah, what's happening? Why is this so controversial? Because HBO is doing this thing where they have their properties and they can make whatever movie they want, Batgirl and Coyote versus Acme, and people have seen it. Will Arnett said he saw it, and it's great, and it sucks because it will never see the light of day, sometimes to retain rights. And then when they when they test them or, or don't consider them a hit when they're completed, they can write them off for a lot of money that they don't need to worry about promotion and distribution and, and all that stuff. And they just bury it. It's controversial because it directly defies the art of movie making. It makes it paperwork. It makes it a business strategy. That sucks. It's like the Shawshank Redemption. It's like him contracting jobs to the prisoners so he can make a boatload of money and profit off of the misery of, of the inmates who don't have a choice and are happy to have outdoor detail for five days or something, you know? And it's not really about the work itself. Right. I mean, how much does it cost to digitally transfer it and put it, play it on Max? Like an American Pickle available now or whatever movies.com is not available now at on Max or whatever HBO's platform is by the time this episode is released. Uh, it's just gone. I guess you can buy it on, on Prime or whatever. American Pickle? You can't watch American Pickle? On you try? H it's a Max original. It's gone. That's weird. HBO, please sponsor us. <laughs> I'm sure there's logic to this that programmers and acquisitions executives could explain. So please do so in the comments. However, even with an explanation, it wouldn't kind of lessen the fact that entertainment, that movies are a commodity that can be moved around on a balance sheet yeah. in order to make financial sense. It's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit murderous. Not unlike Geronimo's plan. Wow. Way to bring it back. Wes. Yeah, man. What was Geronimo's plan? I don't know. Jerry the Kid is plundering <laughs> copper mines. He's killing the the miners. He killed the Overland Wagon people or whatever. He tried to kill Cyber. I mean, was he just resisting the attempts and repelling the attempts to capture him? Or was he marauding and killing willy-nilly whenever he saw a white eye? It didn't seem particularly honorable, honorable or more virtuous than the annexation, you know? I mean, they're really not comparable, but it's like nobody was out there to do something honorable. He said it was war, and war is many bad things. Was that Apache wisdom just there? Yeah, and kind of an impression. I, I was wondering. <laughs> and so, also, um, Geronimo is not his Native American name. That was a, a, a moniker bestowed upon him by... Mexicans. Bestowed upon whom? Upon Geronimo. What's his name? Geronimo. <laughs> right. What's his real name? Oh, I have no idea. That's what I'm saying. His, his Apache name is Goyacla. Supposedly, it was speculated that Geronimo, as bestowed upon him by the Mexicans, was an honorable tribute to him, one of their fiercest adversaries. The Mexicans hated this band of Apache, but named after St. Jerome. Oh. Geronimo, Goyacla, Apache, Chiricahua. I wasn't really sure of why these distinctions were necessary. Why would he hate the Mexicans so immediately head south to Mexico? Like, you're going to do some fighting down there. There's like an implied lawlessness, but it wasn't like the Mexican government wasn't also after Geronimo. I, I wasn't exactly sure why the crew of Matt Damon and Jason Patrick and Al Siebert or uh, Robert Duvall, why they insisted on avenging the Yaki tribe that was murdered when they discovered the murdered Yaki camp. The scene where Sieber buys it when he dies or takes a nap. Why did they, and they were looking for Geronimo and his band, but why did they confront the other white dudes for killing the Yaki? In the bar? Yeah. Because they did, it was like a full-on detour, right? But why they wanted to to avenge them? I mean, their tracker guy, who was so dishonored at the end and like unceremoniously shipped off, Chato, 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 that was awful. 
Yeah. That was so awful. But I mean, it was part, I think, in allegiance with Tato, whom they considered to be one of their own, and also part just justice, that they wanted to see justice served Yep. in the Wild West, which is characterized, if anything, by its lawlessness. That's how we're explaining it. But again, the reason that I was that, that Geronimo was so difficult for me is because I was not versed in this part of history. I thought that I had Westerns pretty down, at least as, as they're portrayed in movies. But they got to Mexico and they were questioning these other white guys about the Yaqui tribe. And I was like, wait, there are Indians, like Native Americans, there are Indians in Mexico? And Kelly Ray said, well, yeah. And I was like, they're Mex- they're, it's Mexico. And she's like, Mexico is America. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow that was weird yeah it was all annexed and colonized but we don't talk about that as much uh, so we talk about what we know which is the actors and the movie and did you not feel that gatewood and Britton davis kind of took a back seat like they were set up as the main characters introduced as such matt damon has his narration but he doesn't narrate when he disappears for like 30 minutes of the movie when we're focusing on Geronimo's marauding band. That's the thing. This movie is called Geronimo, an American legend. It starts off with the white military men. And then we spend a little time on the exploits of Geronimo. But it's kind of all over the place. Like, is this about Geronimo or is it about the white dudes? And if it's about the white dudes, why do they go away? Is it about America or is it about Mexico? <laughs> it's neither here nor there. It's kind of there. Less more there than here, for sure. But the point is that there is a there there. I thought that Geronimo's, the movie is kind of solid. I agree. There, for in the there there case, here here to there there. <laughs> There's a there there. Uh, no. Is it bad that that we we get Wesley Month movies and some of them I'm tearing down. The Western ones. I had a hard time with this one. This felt a little bit off and a little bit scattered, not based on its its own virtues, but rather how it fits into the Western archetype that you continually ask me about. Did it feel weird because it didn't fit as a Western? I hope not. It was definitely weird at times, and it didn't help that I view this movie accompanied by the wide eye known as size a lot. I mean, this movie is under two hours, but she's like, it's four hours long. <laughs> but for whatever, whatever reason, I was a little bit taken out of it. And I thought of Raising Arizona. Do you remember when he said, <laughs> do you remember when he said that they had no food? So they ate thorns. <laughs> that was, that was the most emo thing I've ever heard. Was it like an elute? Was it like a Jesus thing? We, 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 we found ourselves in a place where we had to turn inwardly and, and be sustained by our spiritualism or did they actually eat thorns? Because I looked it up and there are no edible thorns that I can discern that would sustain a people. Ah, uh, was it a was it something lost in translation? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Was it a prickly pear or something where they got to eat delicious fruit that they now make candies out of or whatever? Oh, uh, <laughs> but this is what it made me think of. I tried to sort through what Doc Schwartz had said, but prison ain't the easiest place to think. And when there was no meat, we ate fowl. And when there was no fowl, we ate crow day. When there was no crawl that had to be found, we ate sand. You ate what? We ate sand. You ate sand? That's right. <laughs> you ate what? <laughs> we ate sand. You ate sand? That's right. <laughs> oh, if only the Coen brothers did Geronimo, an American legend. I mean, didn't they kind of do that with Buster Scruggs? <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe. Tarantino said that Walter Hill took Geronimo to a really interesting place. And while a lot of people thought it was boring, Americans thought the movie was boring. He didn't think so. He said that the Americans just weren't worthy of it, of where he took this movie uh, in the Western genre to a special place. It definitely wasn't boring to me, but I was distracted too much of the time by how scattered it was. It felt like Wes Studi is like known for the his role as American Indians. So Saturday Night Live dressed him up as Geronimo and like paraded him around and stuff. It was weird. It, it felt not real and immersive, which is kind of the key aspect as far as I'm concerned for Westerns. Hmm. I mean, there's some really impressive stunt work. Oh, man. Jason Patrick earned his keep with that one stunt. Oh, man. Are you talking about the horse? Everybody's talking about the horse. You know, that dude is from Queens and never rode a horse in his life. That was n insane. It was great. They filmed it last in case he died, but he didn't. So he's charging for the stand standoff with the Chiricahua, I'm assuming. Yeah. And then he lays down his horse, uses his horse for cover, and then gets back on the horse, but without actually mounting it like the how the horse like lifts him up off of the ground you don't see you don't even see the fear in his he's just got the energy even look. of timothy chalamet he's like the the lisa al gaib or whatever <laughs> and like he just pops up and rides away it was crazy it was bonkers and also west duty does some gnarly charges like through water and like down cliffs and stuff that's because he's west duty he's the man and leaning forward and like knocking people off of horses. Yeah. Incredible stunt work. I don't know how, I highly doubt that this got a no animals were harmed in the making of this movie Humane Society stamp of approval because these horses were falling. And not only were they falling, but they were falling on people. And yet, and yet, Jason, maybe this is the massive cover up that is Geronimo, which is why it didn't really stand out. I knew of it because it has a silly title. But Jason Patrick maintains in interview, neither horse nor human, not a single one harmed during the making of this movie. I find that very hard to believe. Yep. But massive cover up. If it's true, man, movie magic. Yeah. Because as Christine Vachon says, there is no crisis on set other than someone getting hurt. And other than that, they are all challenges to be met. <laughs> That's some producer wisdom right there. And so your final rating for Geronimo, an American legend, is? I, I don't feel that it was particularly offensive. Uh, fa wow. I was probably offensive. It wasn't particularly effective. I, I could see through it too much. And it's, it's it seems clear that despite the stellar cast, it doesn't really survive in the era of Westerns. And I don't think that that was because it was overshadowed by the resurgence of, I'm going to say, better Westerns. In the 90s, it was a little bit the hostiles of its day. It was unflinching in its depiction of the white man's brutality and the retaliatory brutality of the Apache, but not in a human interest, fuzzy, lesson learned, coming together in a, you know, the white man's still bad, dances with wolves, best picture kind of way. I think it was for the, for its time, a little bit too middle ground. And no one was truly in the right. And his end was not satisfying. He, a bunch of people died. He went on the lamb for a couple of months, was brought back in and was really no better off than when he'd started, I guess, except posthumously securing your place in the, uh, the, the stories handed down by your people because your name has become the stuff of legend. I guess in that vein, it was fine. And I want Wes Studi to have his moment in the sun being that I do think he is a good actor and a good representation and has a marvelous face that could be both lovable and terribly scary at the same time. I think he was a really effective Geronimo. I just, I don't know. I guess it was enough to see the good people, but it felt like a made-for-TV Western to me. I'm going to give it an all right on your behalf to go with my good, because even if there's a lot of gray and a lot of uncomfortable, Geronimo ultimately comes down to the two emotional moments or two emotional beats of the U.S. government or military betray, ultimately betrays the Apache people and the Native Americans. And ultimately, Geronimo comes around and is able to find some kind of acceptance in order to live out the rest of his years, I guess, in Florida. 
And that's our discussion on Geronimo, an American legend. If you would like to let us know what you thought, 818-835-0473 or whatevermovies at gmail.com. And we hope that you're enjoying Wesley Month. Thanks for listening. Ever thought about starting your own podcast? Do you have a business or a message you want to share with the world? Well, now it's easier than ever with Electricast. Hi, I'm Mark Netter. And I'm Peter Ravelson. We're the founders of Electricast Media. Whether you want to start a new podcast or already have one, join Electricast to grow your audience, monetize your content, and build your community. With our simple sign-up, you get free promotion, world-class analytics, premium ads, and personal support. Go to Electricast.com and join our community today. Electricast. Transform your influence. Electric acid. Have you ever wondered what actually happens in Congress every day? Stay informed on Capitol Hill's daily happenings with a concise, factual summary of the Senate and House of Representatives' activities from the previous session, free from bias, on the Congressional Record Daily Digest podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and discover the process from the heart of U.S. politics. The Congressional Record Daily Digest, an Electric Cast production. Electric Cast.